Hi, my name is Mike Hale and I'm presenting on behalf of Heroes. I'm going to talk today about using data on harmful chemicals to improve circularity in the recycling process. Just to give you a bit of information about URITS, URITS is the European Union for the Responsible Incineration and Treatment of Special Waste. It was established in the mid 90s and represents over 90% of the EU's specialist hazardous waste incineration sector. There's a total incineration capacity for hazardous waste of over 3 million tonnes per year. And we have 26 members across 12 different EU states plus Switzerland and Turkey. That represents about 40 state-of-the-art plants and over 4,500 well-trained employees. Now you're probably wondering why uh, such an association that is based on incineration is interested in recycling. Well, historically, although the members are tied by operation of a hazardous waste incinerator, over the last 30 years or so, all the members have diversified to provide a wider service provision, both to industrial sectors and to the wider society. We developed alternative treatment techniques to both recover and recycle different hazardous waste and non-hazardous waste. You might all be familiar with the example of solvents, but also more advanced treatment techniques to recover valuable fractions, e.g. Precious, precious metals, and or to prevent hazardous substances contaminating other recycling streams. At the base of it all, the incinerators recover energy according to local needs, so that could be through heat or through electricity, and also materials, mostly in the form of metals from the bottom ash. Some hazardous waste is always inevitable. Our role is to make sure that it is treated correctly and are destroyed or irre irreversibly transformed, at the same time making sure that the recycling loops are kept as clean as possible. To give you a brief outline of what I'll talk about, four main topics, current information gaps, opportunities for the future from better information flows, some examples of the consequences of both good and bad information for the waste operators, and how we can keep secondary raw material cycles clean and the benefits that that will bring. To start off with, let's talk about the current information situation. We have information gaps. The first question is often asked is what information is needed? Simply more information. At the moment, we have good details where we have business to business relationship, say for example, from someone like the chemical industry, where we're get, getting the information direct from the waste producer. We have a good understanding of the waste on both sides of the, uh, of the relationship. Where it becomes more difficult is the further you move down a product supply chain uh, and incorporate chemicals and mixtures and substances into more complex articles. Then we tend to observe a loss of information. So really what we need is details of articles that allows us the potential to work out where we can aggregate waste streams. We accept as waste managers that we're still learning and the ECHA's skip database will help to fill that information gap. The reason we're doing all this is that quality recycling depends on having a market, both in terms of value and making sure that we meet strict product requirements. In terms of information, people say, well, can you give us a list of different types of information that you want? Unfortunately, there's no one size fits all solution for each waste or waste stream. The information requirements will very much depend on the type of material that you're looking at. Why do we need more information? What's the added value of providing more information? It's useful to waste operators in identifying which products and waste streams are likely to contain substances of concern. That helps to reduce the need for complex chemical analysis at the waste input and make sure, sure that we can improve traceability of substances of concern in the end of life product as they enter the waste streams. It helps support uh, the protection of human health from workers' perspectives. It makes sure that we can protect the environment and it helps to use cleaner secondary raw materials that are more suitable for entering products streams. As I mentioned, it will also help us develop new innovative sector or waste specific approaches that will enable better recycling. 
I've already mentioned the, the phrase substance of concern. That's one of the things that we really need to, to think about how we can define. It has to be built on a race risk based approach for products that contain suitable thresholds. The key to it is traceability. It can't be voluntary if, if it's going to be effective. And it's crucial that imported articles follow the same rules as those articles produced in the EU. That allows better information both for consumers to make informed choices and greater opportunities for waste management companies to make sure that the recycling loops are kept clean to contaminate those recycling loops when necessary and to, to produce better recycling. How could we define substance of concern? Simply as comprehensively as possible. REACH defines substance as a very high concern and is the focus of the SKIP database. Eurex believes that we could go further. Other substances already have restrictions defined in other commitments, e.g. POPs in the Stockholm Convention, Mercury in the Minamata Convention, other heavy metals, CMR substances. All of those can help provide a basis for a definition of substances of concern. That's one of the most difficult topics is that of legacy substances. As new substances are defined as substances of concern, in some cases, many years after the substance is created and possibly incorporated into a complex article, that produces a difficulty in terms of capturing that information. How do you capture information on substances of concern for articles and products that have long lifespans of say 10 to 15, maybe 20 years, long after the actual material has been produced? Ultimately, this is an open question. Will it lead to requirements for full material disclosure in supply chains? It isn't just about substances of concern, but also about substances of interest. There's an opportunity for us here to use the similar uh, approach to identify critical raw materials that will allow us to increase the amount of dismantling and therefore targeted quality recycling. That allows us to retain more valuable resources rather than requiring more virgin materials, which is crucial if we want to realise the goals of achieving a circular economy. As I say, better targeting from more information allows new techniques to develop, be developed and also potentially reduces the amount of analysis. We're really just at the beginning of exploring the possibilities offered by the SKIP database. I can give you some good examples of both the consequences of good information flows and bad information flows. Hazardous waste collection and treatment acts as a gateway to the circular economy. It enables us to build trust in the quality of secondary raw materials. If we adopt a precautionary approach to avoid the reintroduction of hazardous substances in recycling, we can do that by properly identifying and removing those substances at an early stage. This enables safe recovery and recycling processes and prevents substances of concern reaching the wider environment and also ensures that the circular economy remains clean and ultimately economically viable. It's crucial that we develop greater confidence in the quality of secondary raw materials and destroy or capture unwanted hazardous substances. If we're to maintain trust and perhaps more importantly value in secondary raw materials, we can't accept lower standards for recycled materials. We have to make sure that they're subject to the same rules we're already starting to observe problems with contaminants in recycled materials that affect the future recycling. An easy example is bisphenol A, BPA, that is often contained in thermal receipts. And that material then contaminates the quality of recycled paper, if not properly uh, captured at the outset of the recycling process. Eco design and substitution will obviously help. But not every substance of concern can be substituted. We need to level the playing field with high standards, both for recycled materials on the input and the output, and not reduce the standards. How do we keep the material cycles clean? 
And why does it matter? The concept of decontamination is really aiming to remove unwanted hazardous substances. That means proper management of those unwanted hazardous substances to allow more and higher quality recycling, allowing us to keep the recycling loops clean. It's crucial that we prevent dilution and low quality mixing of recycled materials because that ultimately destroys value of the recycled materials. I can leave you with a thought that Jörki Katainen gave in a speech to Europe a couple of years ago. He said, the hazardous waste management sector has an important role to play in striking the right balance between recovery and final disposal of materials that become waste. This is because they have the right tools and technologies to remove substances of concern from waste. And if this is not possible, to destroy those materials, obtaining energy during the process. Just to leave you with a few key messages. Better information will lead to more intelligent and better quality recycling. Waste operators need more information, but those requirements will differ across different types of waste and according to the waste stream. We all need harmonised rules for waste classification, end of waste. And crucially, we need better enforcement of the existing legislation, much of it which is very good, but is not enforced sufficiently. Source separation is critical. Any dilution or mixing of substances in the waste streams will kill off high quality recycling and prevent clean material loops. We really need to work out ways to develop and promote markets for secondary raw materials, which maintain value. So more intelligent and informed recycling is an area of potential economic growth that we should take huge advantage of across the EU. Thanks very much for your time. If you would like any more information, here's our details. Our website is eurits.org or you can contact me at admin at eurits.org. Thank you.